And our play-by-play -play man, Sean McDonough. Enjoy, everybody. Tonight, from Connecticut's capital city, one of the biggest games of this college basketball season. It's going to be a knockout, dragout type of game. He can't be stopped! Wow! The two beasts of the East. We come here trying to steal one on the road. Young, the acrobatic dunk. Whoever's more physical, more tough, probably will win the game. This is Big East basketball. The crowd going to be into it. Oh, no! We all our wars. Welcome everyone to a much anticipated Big Monday presented by Bud Light, a part of Rivalry Week brought to you by Cisco on ESPN. Tonight from the sold out and rocking XL Center in downtown Hartford, Connecticut, number four Pittsburgh and top ranked UConn. It's a game with major implications in the race for the Big East regular season title. Both teams eyeing possible number one seeds in the NCAA tournament. Connecticut setting the pace in the Big East, only one conference loss. Pittsburgh, Marquette, and Louisville right behind them. UConn still has games left at Marquette and at Pittsburgh. Hi, everybody, and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough along with Jay Billis and Bill Raftery. Delighted to have you with us as we get a look at two of the best teams in the country, some of the best players in the country. One of them is Hashim Thabi. His coach, Jim Calhoun, says he's the dominant force in the game right now and starting to dominate at both ends. You know, he's been much more potent and much more confident on the offensive end, but when you break his game down, Hashim Thabi, half of his field goals are dunks. He is scoring off of dunks and free throws. His other shots, which include layups, he's only shooting 48%. So you're going to see Pittsburgh try to body him up and keep him out of the lane. They don't want him dunking or shooting free throws. You can't foul him. Sean, we work with a dominant force. So how do you beat number one? You go right out of expect Blair to attack. But I think more importantly, drive, draw, hit the floater, drive, draw, kick. Don't make him such a presence. Dewan Blair is another one of the best inside players in the country. He said his game plan tonight, as Bill just said, go right at Hashim Thabit as we look at Star Watch. And go right at him. He's right into his chest to draw fouls. But Dewan Blair, the best offensive rebounder in the country, and oftentimes going against a shot blocker, offensive rebounds are available. And for UConn, Thabit goes on. His ability to dominate such a presence at Seton Hall on Saturday. His 2020 game, the first for UConn in 36 years. Pittsburgh arrives in Hartford, winners of five in a row with a veteran starting five. LeVance Fields leading the nation in assist to turnover ratio and the hot shooting Jermaine Dixon. Up front, Sam Young is their leading scorer at 18 per game with Blair and the senior Tyrell Biggs. Connecticut's won 13 straight to go to 24 and one. Playing without Jerome Dyson, their two guard with knee surgery today. Greg Ostry, the veteran, takes his spot on the lineup with A.J. Price at the point. Up front, Stanley Robinson, the beat, and Jeff Adrian. Connecticut's leading score at 14 points per game. He averages a double-double for the year. Great anticipation for this one. The Huskies adjusting to life without Jerome Dyson. He underwent surgery on his right knee today. There had been some speculation he might return before the end of the season for Jim Calhoun, but the coach told us today he will not. It will be next year when they next see Dyson. And they lose a warrior when they lose Jerome Dyson, a guy that can break you down off the dribble and put you into five-on-four situations. They're going to have to run better half-court offense without him, run more sets, and make sure they execute those set plays. Pitt looking for its first win ever against the number one team. The last three times they played the top ranked team in each occasion it was against UConn. The beat and Blair will get acquainted right off the opening tip thrown up by Mike Kitts and they'll do it again. Ed Hightower and Tony Green are the other officials and the officiating could be a key with so many talented players tonight. Foul trouble always a potential determining factor. And this time, Fabit won the tip back to A.J. Price. Sean McDonough, Jay Billis, Pittsburgh goes. Minimum. With LeVance Fields guarding Price. Uh, this is a play we saw them working on today, Jay. The double high ball screen. 
Greg Ostry, the senior, very experienced and ready to take the place of Jerome Dyson, the coaches feel he's a capable player. And that would certainly help their cause if Stanley Robinson, the junior, could get it going. He's averaging just five points per game. Stanley Steamer is a great talent. Started to practice well last week. Could be a big find coming late in the season. And Dewan Blair not helping off on that curl, staying connected to Thabit. Fields missed his first shot. He's been hot lately, but he's been a much better shooter and scorer in their home games than he has been on the road. Adrian's wide open. And the rebound down to Blair with Robinson flying in. They switched that pick and roll after the hedge. Instead of recovering to the beat, Blair just switched off. Tyrell Biggs, that's a three for Pittsburgh and the early lead for the Panthers. And, and Jay mentioned the switch. Biggs was the guy on the beat. That time he counters at the other end with a deep contribution. I think we're going to see Pittsburgh try to move Hashim the beat around on the court using whoever he is guarding with run out ball screen. So you that, can't let him catch it there. Not too tough. And it fumbled the pass, not like him. Austri missed the floater and Blair another rebound. He's second in the Big East in rebounding over 12 per game. Only Luke Heron go of Notre Dame with more. Jermaine Dixon a miss. And Robinson started Price the other way. And you need easy baskets, quick ones before the beat gets down. That's what Pitt tried to do that last trip. You just don't want to force bad ones. You cannot let him catch it there. Biggs fouls on a reach in. Two minutes in the ball game, our first foul. When the beat gets a foot in the paint or gets a piece of the paint, he is much harder to deal with. You've got to push him out of that lane, get contact with him, and keep that contact and push him off the lane, make him catch a step further where he has to make a post move. Now, did you learn that after Sampson or after Robinson or after both? I'm still trying to clear my head from how hard Ralph Sampson dunked on me when I was playing. Now, you have some interesting thoughts, though, about how to play a guy like that. I think you have to, I think you have to keep contact with him all the time, get an arm bar into his hip and push him off the lane because once you catch it inside the lane you really don't have to make a post move you just power it up one out of two fourth the beat celebrating his 22nd birthday today he did not start playing basketball until he was 16 years old grew up playing soccer in his native Tanzania so they believe particularly on offense there's a lot of upside as he continues to learn how to play that's a deep two for Sam Young and you mentioned the referees they could have called an offensive foul on Blair that trip for they let it go illegal screen. yeah moving but you know what's interesting I think Sam Young is a real key to this ball game for Pittsburgh because I don't think there's a good matchup for him defensively if he's aggressive looks for openings he's going to score some points in this one well, Robinson's got to contribute at both ends for that reason the beat, you can see Blair very careful not to foul. And the two losses for Pittsburgh, he's been in foul trouble in both. And Young with another deep jumper. That one is a three Sam for Young. Sam Young, the senior from Clinton, Maryland, who came back for his senior year to play in games like this one. And the beat never got down the floor. Twice now they pushed the ball, gotten great opportunities. Well, when the beat caught the ball there, Blair didn't let him have an angle. He made him shoot over. And that's what I was saying. If you if you don't let him dunk, he only shoots 48% on other shots. Adrian forced to take a tough shot. Good defense by Tyrell Biggs. Ooh. And the beat goes flying over the oh, back no. of Blair. And he is down and clutching at his arm. Well, you think Blair is strong? Oh, holy cow. Now that's a physical basketball play. And look. Uh, uh, he just ripped the ball at the end of this. Unfortunately for the beat, you can see the arms. He in almost there. broke his arm. That I mean, is, look at that. That, that is, is something else. And he goes after it with both hands, and the beat keeps it. He just grabbed his arm. I mean, he had his arm grabbed. Well, let's hope he didn't break his arm. I mean, he has been grasping at that left arm that was trapped within the body and arm of Duan Blair ever since he hit the floor. Boy, that could have been bad. Disastrous. He still hasn't straightened his left arm since the play unfolded. And it was as quiet as it could be with a sellout crowd in here. The Husky fans already dealing with the reality that Jerome Dyson is gone for the year and the loss of the beat would be a lot bigger. You know when you grab like that Jay and the hand is in there there's no way you realize the guy's going to come tumbling over right. your back. You know it's just a great physical move. I don't think there's anything illegal at all. No but I, what I'm saying is you're not going to stick your hand in there again. No. 
He might not get it back. Gavin Edwards is in, and he did a good job defending Blair. Rebound Adrian. And how about Adrian there? Going to block the shot, but still recovering for that rebound. That was big time. Nice step in by Young. Young is the key player for Pittsburgh. And he's off to a very good start with five of their eight points. Foul on Young as he went over the back on the rebounding action. After the miss by Levance Fields. Levance Fields has shot only 32% from the field on the road this year compared to 50 at home. You saw the beat flexing his arm on the bench. You know, that's not a Fields type of shot. They can run their offense now without the beat. They can get better things. They can always get that shot late in the sequence. Ever ready in the game now. Mustry, tough kid. Pittsburgh not nearly as good of a defensive team as they have been. They are allowing teams to shoot a better percentage. Where they're better this year is offensively. A much more efficient offensive team. And he's efficient down here, I think. Adrian missed the jump hook. Rebound for Blair. His fourth already. Kemba Walker is in off the Connecticut bench. A guard, number 15. Blair the call for a walk. He's got to go up right away when he catches the ball there. Timeout, 15-27, left in the first half. It's a five-point lead for Pittsburgh, and Sam Young has five for the fourth-ranked Panthers. I hear ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Bud Light. With just the right taste that never fills you up, the difference is drinkability. And in part by Pacific Life. For insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. And Windows, life without walls. Welcome back to Hartford. Let's see if Hashim Thabit comes back on the floor. After the immediate timeout, he's rapidly moving up the all-time list for block shots in Big East Conference games only. Jim Bayheim, the Syracuse coach, says he is the greatest shot blocker in the history of the Big East. And not long ago, we spoke with Hashim about blocking shots. Blocking shots is like telling them, don't, don't come back. You know, they're going to come back, you're going to block it again. Every time they they come to the paint, they see you, they're going to make a U-turn, or they're going to end up taking a bad shot. Is that the way you felt? Did you not come back on occasion? <laughs> I made U-turns on anybody. But it's amazing. I think his patience has been the most interesting thing about his development as a shot blocker. He's very, very patient and waits for the offensive player to leave the floor before he commits himself. But that, that was an incredible strength play. Look, look at what's on his arms. I, I'm not sure whether those are sweatbands or headbands. Keeping the muscles together. The report from the Connecticut bench is the beat will come back. He's not on the floor at the moment. UConn ball down by five, nearly five minutes played. There's some, there's some rumor that they, Samson just played a one-man zone back there and blocked other people's shots, not yours. A.J. Price, a deep three. And Price is their best three-point shooter, but he's also the guy that takes the big shots and makes the big shots. If this comes down to the end, the ball will be in the hands of A.J. Price. Cross screen on the bottom, trying to load up. They miss Blair. The beat still watching, and Sam Young again, this time a baseline jumper. Seven points for Sam Young. Tough shot under duress. When he gets his mitts on it, nobody's taking it away. Good outlet. Carves such a great area. Nice run by Dixon. And Jermaine couldn't finish. Now the Huskies look to counter after the rebound by Robinson. Price, a little bump from Blair. The crowd wanted to foul. Dixon's ahead of the field. They do take opportunity breaks, but tonight in particular, taking advantage. Even though the beat's not on the floor, they're sneaking out and taking advantage. Well, Blair got away with the foul. That, that was a clear foul on the drive by A.J. Price. One big difference from this Pittsburgh team to what we've seen in recent years, they're better in transition and clearly making more of an effort to get out and run, particularly tonight before Connecticut can set up that shot-blocking half-court defense. Adrian called for the travel, and Hashim Thabit is going to check back in to the delight of the sellout crowd. Now, you never like to see anything like that happen, but it's good to see him back. Probably hyper-extended, if anything. He was out of the game for three minutes. 
Pittsburgh ball leading by six. Brad Wanamaker with the ball in off their bench and Gilbert Brown number 11 is also a sub for Jamie Dixon. Gilbert Brown a terrific athlete really good finisher. Wanamaker feeds the post nicely. Young clearly engaged early a little bit long with the jumper and Adrian tapped the rebound to himself. He collided with Blair. They were roommates together last summer in Arizona the Amari Stoudemire skills camp. They're Good pass. Walker. Acrobatic move along the baseline. Great cut to set it up and a wonderful look. A little pirouette at the tip. Jarring screen set by Blair. He knocked Walker to the deck and Young was open. He has 10 points now. Well, they're trying to move Hashim the beat around on the floor and Blair is going to be involved in a lot of run out ball screens. Nice play and the slip pays dividends. No one at home deep. Yeah, I don't think you can guard a ball screen that way with Hashim the beat. I think you've got to stay connected to him and keep him from rolling to the basket. Dunks and free throws are his whole game. And Jay, nobody in the back collected in a zone for Pitt. Seldom does that happen. They're very alert defensively. First bucket of the night for the beat. Robert Brown travel. Sophomore from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Second Pittsburgh turnover. Now watch Blair here jumping out. Nobody comes over. And I'm not, I think you gotta stay connected to him. If they let let the little guy turn the corner and then help in that regard. But you can't just jump out and not recover without somebody switching. I don't know why people don't go under until somebody makes a shot out there. Or just, yeah, or just stretch it out. But anytime you let him roll, get a piece of the paint, it's over. There's the switch and they picked him up. Gary McGee, who's deep down the bench ordinarily, brought in the bang for beat for a moment, and he got called for a foul. Gets us to a timeout. Five-point Pittsburgh lead coming up. We'll continue our countdown to the top 30 plays will last 30 years right after this. Buffalo Wild Wings presents the top 30 plays of the last 30 years. Number 20, the birth of a legend. 20 seconds to go. Here's Jordan. Yep, he's letting it go. Good from 15 feet. Michael Jordan, that's what they wanted. It is Jordan. The game is over. North Carolina wins. Whatever happened to Michael Jordan after that? Of course, that shot won the national championship. Almost as memorable as that shot. Perhaps as memorable. What happened next? Fred Brown mistaken James Worthy for a teammate. Tune in to ESPN tonight, 9 Eastern, for Texas and Texas A&M. You'll see the 19th greatest play of the last 30 years. We'll reveal the number one play on March 15th during the ACC championship. There's Jerome Dyson at arthroscopic knee surgery today. Natalie attired and over by the Husky bench. Uh, tough to sit there for him. And they got the offensive foul. Now they got McGee oh, running okay. over Craig Austri on that little back pick. All they all they do is move Hashim to beat up to the elbow. Then they set a little diagonal upstream for him, a little back pick. And McGee just ran him over. Uh, two quickies by McGee, but they need some minutes for him down the stretch. Here goes number three. three. Wow. So he's, he's not staying between the beat and the basket. Where a guy catches it, you got to be physical with him earlier than that, not just when the pass is in the air. But the problem with that isn't the fouls on McGee, it's that it moves Pittsburgh closer to the one and one. And now they play real small with Biggs playing to beat. He should really try and pin him and go to him. Khabib's done such a better job of widening out and taking up space when he's posting up. And now it's Young with the back screen, and again, use him. Goodness. Price dropped the pass, then he held Wanamaker. Good call by Mike Kitts. Jamie Dixon wanted an intentional foul call. He will get the foul called on Price. His first and the Huskies second. Stanley Robinson back in. Gary McGee, three fouls in under a minute for Pittsburgh, and he's back on their bench. And, and Sean, the other end, Walker has an entry to the beat and goes the other way. That's inexperience. He's got to bring it down to take advantage. Young is guarding him. 
Gilbert Brown to Brad Wanamaker. Strong oh, drive and a little bit too strong with the shot. But right there Tyrell for the putback was Tyrell Biggs. There's an example of Hashim Thabit coming over to block a shot and it opening up the offensive glass for Biggs. That's where a strength can become a weakness. Nice pick. And Walker and Thabit is fouled from behind. Pittsburgh coached by Jamie Dixon, the 43-year-old native of Southern California in his sixth season. Already 155 wins, fellas. With six more, he'll tie the legendary Everett Case of NC State for the most wins in college basketball history in the first six years of a career. There's a guy, in my opinion, Jamie Dixon, who hasn't gotten anywhere near enough credit for what he's done. Well, that, that's the league, though. There's so many names when you think of the two gyms, Bayheim and, of course, Calhoun here. But, Chris, Everett Case started the Underground Railroad, not Frank McGuire, who was known for that at Carolina. Ever got a lot of New York kids to go to North Carolina State, a legend in the early days of the ACC. But you're right about Alan Jamie. Biggs was his second in the 16 foul. The officials look like they're going to play, let him play early, maybe not so much lately. Gavin Edwards rebounds the miss by Ashton Gibbs. Does that take those Jersey guys long to get one up, does it? <laughs> Gibbs is leading the Big East in three point field goal percentage. Just under 50 percent. Nice. Spacey. Ashton Gibbs, freshman from West Orange, New Jersey, threw it over the head of Brad Wanamaker and out of bounds. Yeah, that's, that's Wanamaker, Wanamaker should have gone to the three-point line. That was a wide-open three. Instead, he ran into the congestion, and there was a turnover. So Levance Fields is going to come back in after the third Pittsburgh turnover. Connecticut ball with Price and Walker in the backcourt. Edwards, Fabid, and Robinson up front. See, Blair's not even guarding Fabid. He just let him jump right in front of him. Let's say goodnight usually. Yeah, but if you don't let him dunk, he doesn't make those at a high percentage. You've got to make him shoot over, but you can't let him just jump in there. Look, he's not even guarding him. He just jumps right in front of him. You've got to play him up the line and keep your arm bar on his hip. can make that little 10 footer they run some high low he ends up with that jumper better job there by Blair. better job by Blair there that was a terrific denial and look at the angle of prices pass. go to the forward let him dump it down one dribble to the baseline and you have a wide open pass that leads the beat to the basket gotta watch Stanley Robinson on this play here Walker Hands by player again. He does have some strength. Pushed the beat about five feet out. He's second on the team in steals. He's got great feet and unbelievable hands. Did you play anybody that size, smaller than you, that strong? Ben Coleman was kind of yeah. like that, but Ben was 6'9. Blair is listed at 6'7, 265. He lost about 10 pounds of fat. Thinks he's lighter on his feet this year. There's a reach in foul on Wanamaker. And he thinks. Being a bit more spelt has helped him stay out of foul trouble. He said last year he'd get some lazy fouls as he was tired and would reach. This year, lighter on his feet, not so much. Well, what Jay's saying, though, is you've got to be in a defensive stance and be away from the man. And that's where he gets in foul trouble. He lets the guy duck in, beg for the basketball. And I think you have a tendency to relax defensively, even though he's felt lucky. Well, he doesn't, he hasn't been playing for the beat early enough. He needs to play him earlier. And play him a little more up the line to keep him out of that lane. You got to be physical with him before the ball's being thrown in. Jeff Adrian back in. Four points for Kemba Walker. The crowd getting back into it. The Huskies within four now, midway through the first half. Pittsburgh is over the limit in fouls. Connecticut has been called for only two. Connecticut commits fewer fouls, about 12 per game, than any team in the country. There's that pump fake. Everybody bites on it. Fields in trouble, then found Brown, who came to a wide open spot, got his own rebound. Robinson blocked it. Brown blocked by Adrian. And finally, it's Dewan Blair with the score. Well, that's all because the beat was lifted wide open at the rim. That sequence ensued. But it shows you why shot blocking isn't always that big of a problem. If you get it sent back that way, that means you're going to get some second chance opportunities. Good reach. 
pitch in as they doubled in the low post and Gilbert Brown stripped it. The lob for Young beautifully executed from Levance Fields. Running the floor, taking advantage early, and Levance, who drops him on you, brings that chagrin type look on Jim Calhoun's countenance. How about this look, Jay? Much more efficient as this team offensively and much more efficient in transition. They really run the ball. Conscious effort to beat the beat down. Danny Dixon says Fields is playing as well as any point guard in the country right now. Tomorrow night on ESPN at Super Tuesday, another big doubleheader at 7 Eastern. The Big Ten battle, fifth ranked Michigan State faces 21st ranked Purdue. The Boilermakers have won 17 of their last 18 Big Ten home games. And then at 9 Eastern time, the amazing scoring of Jody Meeks on display as Kentucky takes on Vanderbilt. It's Super Tuesday presented by KFC on ESPN. You just saw Kentucky over the weekend. Very impressive defensively without Patterson. And that surprised a lot of people. Of course, when you have Jody Meeks, the quick feet, the setup, knockdown shot, penetration, they're playing pretty good. Well, if Patterson doesn't play again, Meeks has to score at least 30 against Vanderbilt. AJ Price with the banker. And a nice use of the bounce, a little kiss. And Amityville. Pittsburgh's having a tough time staying in front of UConn's guards. They are breaking that defense down off the bounce. Five points for Price. Some observers felt perhaps he tried to do too much against Seton Hall Saturday early in the game, knowing they were without Dyson. And a travel call as Levance Fields are actually going to time out first before the walk. Jim Calhoun not happy that he got the timeout that he was requesting on his way to the floor. Interesting the way they've lifted the beat too and got some counters underneath the rim. This is a well organized program right now. Coached by the Hall of Famer Jim Calhoun. Two wins away from 800 for his career. They're beginning their third week ranked number one in the country. Tied the best start through 25 games in school history. Their only loss was here at the XL Center to Georgetown. Had an 11 game winning streak to start the year, then the loss in 13 in a row. One since. The question is can they sustain it without Dyson? It's going to be interesting to see how the guards react because Walker's going to get more minutes now. Can he handle him as a freshman? And can he play under control, make good decisions? Stanley Robinson, I think, is the biggest key to this team being successful, Jay. He's got to step his game up. Yeah, and Craig Ostry is another guy that has to play well. Everybody is going to have to do a little bit more than they were doing otherwise. But I think you've noticed when, whenever there's a run-out ball screen, they're trying to keep them away from that screen. And that's going to be their all game long. Vance Fields missed the open jumper. But the follow by Nasir Robinson, another deep bench player, freshman out of Chester, Pennsylvania, just into the game with his first bucket of the night. Maven Fields out there. But interesting enough, Sean, was all the ball screen. You can see the beat never really gets back and not concentrated on the checkout. Adrian Beaton, and he will take a little rest because of that. Anybody that the beat is guarding has to go out and set screens, especially ball screens, because there'll be nobody there to hedge. If he is there, he's away from the basket, and his shot blocking capability is neutralized. AJ Price at the line. After the first foul on Fields, it's a one and one on the eighth team foul to half for Pittsburgh. Price made the first. He's 67 percent for the year from the line. This has been a really efficient place for UConn to score, and that's been the free throw line. They are, All year long, they are out shooting and outscoring their opponents from the free throw line, largely because they don't foul. This team does not foul. 12 a game. That's incredible when you think of it. It's amazing. It, they're not called. Maybe they're they foul. <laughs> yeah, they have the fewest fouls per game, as we said earlier, of any team in the country. Thabit is the only Husky who's fouled out this year, and that was only once. Robinson called for the travel. He's enduring a very tough time. His 15-year-old brother Kareem was shot as an innocent bystander in the middle of the afternoon last week near their home in Chester, Pennsylvania. He was hospitalized for a day or two, and the Sears family told him to stay in Pittsburgh. Jamie Dixon was ready to fly to Philadelphia with the Sears, but the family said, no, Kareem's going to be fine. A.J. Price. With a three that ignites the crowd, he has 10. Timeout Pittsburgh in a three-point game. 
Robinson made a key mistake defensively here. You never leave the ball, especially when it's in the hands of A.J. Price. Robinson switches out here and then leaves the ball. You uh, cannot leave the ball, period. And in a way, Dixon was at fault. He should have communicated. Stay there. I got your guy. This Thursday, catch a double dip of college basketball action. It's ESPN's Thursday night showcase, first at 7 Eastern time. Number nine, Duke, taking on St. John. The trip to the Northeast hasn't been friendly for your alma mater so far. Jay, after they lost last night at Boston College at 9 Eastern, Wisconsin and Indiana in a Big Ten matchup. Thursday night showcase presented by T. Rowe Price. On ESPN, we look at the tournament resume for Wisconsin. They won Saturday night on our Saturday night primetime telecast over Ohio State, their fourth win in a row. Yeah, winning four in a row. They had lost six in a row before that, and a lot of people were opining that they were probably out of the NCAA tournament, but I think they are going to be in the field at the end of the day. Their resume brought to you by the ladders. Oh, got to show it. Take that pass. And that Robinson knocked it out of bounds. It'll be Pittsburgh ball when we come back. Presented by Cisco. I was so tempted on Price's shot. Rivalries never die. Bullies never die. All week long. Cotto takes on top rated Michael Jennings for the World Waterweight Championship. Kelly Pavlik, World Middleweight Champion, a devastating puncher. Pavlik defends his world title against number one ranked Marco Antonio Rubio. Saturday, February 21st, live on pay per view. Contact your pay per view provider to order. See it live. The 2009 Bassmaster Classic starts Saturday at 8 a.m. on ESPN2. I'm Reese Davis, Sports Center right now. Terry Porter is out of work, fired by the Phoenix Suns. Alvin Gentry will take over. The Suns sputtering in a game behind the final spot in the Western Conference playoffs. Steph Curry, nation's leading scorer, is off crutches, walking normally after spraining an ankle this weekend. Tough to call whether he'll play against the Citadel on Wednesday or against Butler and Bracket Busters on Saturday. Sports Center after Big Monday. Stay current with ESPN News. All right, Reese, thank you. A.J. Price, the last seven points for Connecticut to get them within three. Sam Young leading all scores. He has 12 on five out of six shooting. Averages 18 points per game. He's really the matchup, Sean and Bill, that UConn doesn't really have an answer to. It's been a wash between Blair and the beat. The beat really hasn't done much. Offensively hasn't blocked a shot yet. But Sam Young has been the guy that has really taken the offense to UConn. And you notice in all of those replays, the beat was not around the rim. They did it quickly, early in the offense, making great decisions. Juan Blair has two points, but eight rebounds for Pittsburgh to beat four points, a rebound, no blocks yet. He's altered two shots. Jermaine Dixon guarded by A.J. Price. Blair left alone with the beat, and he scored over the shot blocker. And to beat again, just like at the other end, didn't do his homework. A little duck in, and the big fella Lumen. Well, that's how you have to attack him. When you come at him from the strong side, and he's a weak side shot blocker. That's where he's really difficult to deal with. Well, if the beat had the offensive rebound after Price missed the layup, and then Hashim lost it. Jermaine Dixon, Gilbert Brown inside. Boy, he got rattled from behind by the beat. Now the beat hits the floor. How good is this? Your seven foot and change prize. Alert. 
And a rare turnover by Levance Fields trying to set Gilbert Brown up for a lob. They connected three times Saturday against Cincinnati for Brown dunks. You know, I like the official Eddie Hightower saying keep your hands off to Blair. Austri with his first bucket. The elbow jumper for the senior from Stamford, Connecticut. And Levance Fields just cannot get past Craig Austri. He's done a great job of staying in front of him. This is Pitt grinded out right now. Yeah, that's not a good shot. No, not you, can that get, one. you can get that shot anytime in the shot clock. Shooters get itchy though. They haven't had a little stroke in a while. Six minutes to go. Three point lead for Pittsburgh. Their largest lead was eight. Price. The beat swatted it to Edwards. Levance Fields a little casual going after it. I think he thought it was a foregone conclusion. It was coming to him. He didn't factor in the long arm of Hashim the beat. Well, a lot of things lately. Hashim has had his paws on. Hustling, scrapping. Well, you always talk about a player. Does he rebound out of his area? And it seems to be rebounding out of his area on that one. Connecticut, by virtue of 13 straight wins, number one for the third week in a row. There have been five different number one teams this year, including Pittsburgh, which occupied the top spot for two weeks. The Connecticut women also number one. This is the fifth different season that both the men and women have been ranked number one at the same time. In the previous four years, one or the other or both won a national title. And of course, one of the big stories of the weekend, Duke last night up at Chestnut Hill, upset by Boston College, a big win for BC. Now on their tournament resume, wins over North Carolina and Duke. And a winning record in the ACC, I think. Boston College is looking at an NCAA tournament big. Amazing what Gino and Jim have been able to do with this school. Incredible. Both programs, top of the mark. Juan Blair said, I am going to go right after Hashim Thabit, and he has lived up to that promise. Six points for Blair, a sophomore from Pittsburgh, PA. Leads the country in strength goals. Just been pretty. You just have to go right into his chest. Mm -hmm. You cannot allow a shot blocker any space. Nice and hands. Blair got that memo. Wanamaker again with good hands, but Pittsburgh wasn't able to steal it. Robinson to Price now with 10 to shoot and five minutes left in the half. Same play we were talking about, Jay. Robinson hasn't made a three this year. Now three for 13. Blair ripped it away. That is 10 rebounds in the half for Blair. Young missed the reverse dunk. Wanna make her for three. Edwards knocked to the deck and fouled by Sam Young. And what a great play by Fields. They didn't make it, but just a heads up kick to the wing for an open look. All because the beat wasn't there. How about this one, Jay? Well, Blair taking away that space, going right into the beat. And the beat, it locks him to the floor. And that's the way you have to attack a shot blocker. Go right at him. People think you take it to the basket. That's not what we're talking about when we say attack a shot blocker. You have to go right in his chest, right into his chin, and take that space away. And the foul on Young, his second, so he goes to the bench. Pittsburgh's leading scorer, the leading scorer in the game so far tonight with 12. And Gavin Edwards, the last one and one of the half. The next one will be the double bonus when Pittsburgh commits another foul. And Gavin's been getting more minutes and helping up to 11 minutes a game. Pittsburgh has got to keep UConn off the free throw line. And Jamie Dixon getting a little agitated that the fouls are nine to two and his team hasn't shot a free throw yet. While Connecticut's eight out of ten from the line and within a point. Fouls were those three that McGee got all in succession with basically no time going off the clock. And they're running the floor and getting early looks. Away, that's a tough one. He can make that shot, and Blair makes the fadeaway, showing to beat some variety. Eight points now for Dewan Blair with another bucket. He'll have a double double in the first half. Blair's going to get a foul here if he's not careful. He poked it away, but couldn't get to the corner in time to save it. A lot of NBA scouts. 
a long press row here tonight. He was just smiling at one of them, but after the step back, Jack, a little fade away, teaching the big fella a lesson. But before he fades away, he goes right into the chest and backs him off, kind of locks him to the floor, and then pivots and fades away. That was very well executed by Dewan Blair. The last Pittsburgh field goals, the last three of them have all been Blair guarded by Fabit and scoring with Fabit nearby. You know who used to be great at that two guys, Mark Aguirre and Adrian Dan. Just going right into your chest and then turning away for a little fadeaway. Nice. Adrian pretty good at it as well. Strong drive and then missed the dunk. Once again, to beat the last one down, they're going to get an open look and a rebound. Wanamaker passed up an open three for a long two, which he missed. Three to tie for UConn. They're going to go with the beat now. They got a smaller guy in bigs. Mastry with Walker, to beat Adrian and Price. So Blair's not playing to beat right now. He's got to get into him physically. A little stagger on the left. They're really not running that diagonal cut to get the beat to the box. Tough shot by Price, and it rattles home. Connecticut within one as we approach three minutes left in the first half here in Hartford. Price leads the Huskies with 12. And Blair wants the ball. He's going to have to make a good judgment now. Again, one and one with the beat. And again, undeterred. A double double in the first half for DeWan Blair. He's got him right where he wants him now. He can move him away, he can load up, switch hands around the rim. The gates, all that ability and length. Well, the beat is just playing behind Blair. He's not doing anything to discourage the pass in. Air ball out of the corner from Price. 16 double doubles this season for Dewan Blair now. He sets a screen and it's Biggs open for three. Oh, look at Blair work. That's a foul by Khabib got away with it. And Blair's a little bit tired too. That's when you get that foul. He's got to be very careful. Walker into the lane. Rebound fields a little tap foul against Walker. They got some sarcastic applause from the Pittsburgh bench. Uh, this is an overwhelming physical specimen taking the big guy to the tin. Solid. Have a little smile from Shenley. Hey, Jack, the UFO convention's in town. I hadn't noticed. Where to? We must travel in that direction. They're here for us. Hang on! There's no way. My brother and I are not from your planet. You don't look like aliens. What does an alien look like? Like little green people. Take me to your leader, Earthlings. Oh. If we don't get to Witch Mountain, the invasion will begin. Run, run, run! I'm gonna get you out of here. Race to Witch Mountain. Ready, PG. I've got Sarah Fisk, MVP of the Anderson Baby Shower. Congratulations, Sarah. Thanks, Dad. It feels really good. What was the toughest part today? Uh, you know, I guess it was, you know, pretending I actually wanted to be here. But I was able to stay focused and watch highlights from a bunch of college hoops games. So. Great. What's next? Uh, I'd really like my sister Nancy to talk to me again, but uh, I'd settle for a ride home. Nancy! All right, back to you in the studio. Be an ESPN MVP. Get live gamecasts, video alerts, ESPN bracketology, and more with VCast. Only from America's most entertaining network, Verizon. I'm Reese Davis coming up on the UPS Halftime Report. It was a tremendous rivalry week. The moments that make plays of the week coming your way. And then the very Fox is going to deliver Digger's Highlighter of the Week. Plenty of 40-point games for Digger to choose from. We'll see who gets so honored. And Steph Curry is walking around normally, but how soon will he be running around and scoring again for Davidson? We'll see you in a bit, Sean. All right, Reese, thank you. Welcome back, everybody, to Big Monday, presented by Bud Light from the XL Center in downtown Hartford as Rivalry Week concludes, presented by Cisco, two of the best teams in the country, first place in the Big East at State, high toward number one seeds in the NCAA tournament, and two of the best players in the country. And right now in our Star Watch update, Blair with the upper hand, the double-double with no fouls, and the beat does not have a blocked shot. Incredible when you think of it, Blair's been very astute in his analysis offensively. Here he goes locking him in. No, 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 no. You're not going to get away with it twice. 
The beat now has a block shot, and he has another foul. Blair stayed with the play and scored. See, instead of getting intimidated by a block shot or worrying about it, he went right at him again. This young man has a really high work rate. How about the toughness, too, Jay? After he tried to make that move and Thabit was right there, he probably should have given the ball up. But what, what I, what's really impressive is after he gets a shot blocked, he goes and gets it. I mean, he goes and gets it himself. He's not worried about it. He just goes and attacks again. Were you unable to go get it? It was usually in the fourth <laughs> row, so they had to get an usher to go get it. There gets the bounce on the free throw. The beat on the bench likely for the rest of the half with two fouls. The Pittsburgh starting front court now has 30 of their 34 points tonight. That was Pittsburgh's first free throw attempt of the night by Blair. And this is where Adrian can do some damage. Likes to take over. Tough shot here. And pretty good defense and then a silly foul for an upper class one. Adrian's shot was blocked by Biggs and Blair, and then the foul called on Adrian, his first and the team's fifth. Tomorrow night is Super Tuesday, the doubleheader, 7 Eastern, the Big Ten matchup, Michigan State up to number five in the poll just out today against number 21 Purdue, and then at 9 Eastern, an SEC showdown, Kentucky and Vanderbilt. We can't say this week no SEC teams in the top 25 because LSU moved into the poll after five weeks without an SEC team in the top 25. Trent Johnson's done a great job. Coach is playing well. This guy's playing great. Whatever you want, using the rim to ward off anybody. Blair dominating. Well, ever since Sam Young went out, you've seen the intensity ratcheted up by Dewan Blair. Nice pass. The pass three to Gavin Edwards for the bucket. One minute to go in the first half. A six-point lead for Pittsburgh. And retribution, they lifted Blair on that trip, Jay. Yeah, just a poor yeah. job defensively by Blair. Lost vision, tried to hedge out, but didn't recover. Blair. He's, he's, to beat, there's no threat out there. Just jack that one up. Well, that was a shot when you've been playing well that you feel entitled. You know, and that was just a bad, bad shot. I never felt entitled. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> there is a difference of four seconds between the shot clock and game clock. Whether that was Blair trying to show all these NBA scouts a little bit of variety and range. Uh, he, showed, he showed him the range that he can't hit it from. <laughs> he takes another Jamie and show him the bench. Let him wonder, don't prove it. Three to shoot. Price, a step back. Three, and he made it at the shot clock buzzer. Teams seem confused as to whether or not it was the end of the half, but the officials say that it is. What a great step back move by Price. And it looked like he got fouled here, at least hit after he released it. But Mike Kitts right on top of it, doesn't call it. UConn's only lead was a two to nothing. Pittsburgh led by eight at one juncture. The lead down to three. 15 points for A.J. Price, 15 and 13 for DeWan Blair. Here's Reese with the UPS halftime report. All right, Sean, great ending to the first half, an intense first half, and you think Jim Calhoun was ready? Uh, Jay said that he thought that uh, Price got fouled in the final play. Calhoun certainly did, too. He was making his opinion heard as they went to the locker room. Great momentum for the Huskies now, Digger, but still just the third time all season that UConn has trailed at the half. They split the previous two games. DeWan Blair, the biggest reason Pittsburgh's in, uh, in the lead. You know, we thought going into this game tonight, what would be the X factor as far as what goes on with Tabit, what goes on with Blair? And it was obvious that Blair just dominated the end of that first half after uh, Sam Young got the things going early with 12 quick points for Pittsburgh. But the key is how Blair just has that sense of how to go through to beat and how to challenge him and put him in a position to where okay you want to play me come play me and I think to beat on the other end of the floor could not score so when you look at the total effort of Dewan Blair 13 points 15 rebounds it was just incredible to see that ending at the half. Uh, you know, it did take him a little while to get started offensively and you have to wonder how uh, the beat though he returned to the game and scored uh, 
uh, fared after that arm bar takedown, uh, worthy of Vince McMahon's status. But in the early going digger, Sam Young really uh, got the Panthers off to a good start offense. You know, and this you got to credit Vance Fields because he knows his personnel very, very well. And he just wants to come down that floor and find certain guys that get it done. And Young comes out, 12 points, 5 for 6 from the field, picks up a second foul with 442 to go. And then, of course, when Young goes to the bench, that's when Blair takes the game over. And this is what's so incredible about the inside-outside balance. We thought Sam Young versus Jeff Adrian. Adrian only gets his first field goal with 625 to go in the half. So when you look at key matchups, all right, yes, Young is taking advantage of what goes on with Jeff Adrian. We see Blair taking care of business against the beat. But A.J. Price has kept UConn in this with 15 points. Right, very, beat the buzzer. very quickly here now, the impact of Jerome Dyson's absence so far. See, I, I really think Connecticut misses him. I mean, if Price is the only guy in double figures in the first half, the, I feel the explosion of UConn. You saw it when they won an overtime out in Seattle against Gonzaga, who was ranked very, very high then. They combined for 45 points. They don't have that explosiveness now, and that's what they really miss, Reese. All right, 36-33, Pittsburgh has the lead at the break. Coming up on the UPS Halftime Report, we'll show you the terrific plays. See the Blue Devils surfing the guys Jay Billis did. Yeah, they, I thought he'd be still not, uh, he should have been there. He only did it once last year. Plays of the week coming your way soon. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Cisco. Welcome to the Human Network. That young Lady Vols team. UConn, the big shot from AJ Price, a little flip and take down from Dewan Blair and Hosh the beat. 36 33. The beat back in the game appears to be okay. Second half's coming up. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Cisco. Welcome to the Human Network. We. Memorable scenes from memorable first half here in Hartford. We welcome you back to Big Monday presented by Bud Light, part of Rivalry Week, brought to you by Cisco on ESPN. Pittsburgh had an eight-point lead at one point in the first half. They lead by three as we get ready for the second half. Welcome back, Sean McDonough, Jay Billis, Bill Raftery. Early on, it was Sam Young. He had 12 early points for Pittsburgh, and then Jawan Blair took over. He was undeterred and unfazed by Hashim Thabit. You get your arm in there, it might get broken off, but he went, instead of going around or over Thabit, he went right through him, going right into his chest, taking away the space of the shot blocker, getting into his chest, fading away, then countering. I mean, he had every move in the book in the first half, Bill. And poor Hashim didn't get enough touches. I, I know he hurt his arm early. It was not himself, but they're going to have to go to him. If he establishes low post, get it inside. Side by side, brought to you by Cars.com. Blair had 13 rebounds himself. The UConn team had 15 rebounds total. Young back in the game to start the second half Sam got a second foul with 442 to go did not play the rest of the half it's Levance Fields with the ball with Jermaine Dixon Blair Young and Tyrell Biggs for Pittsburgh uh, Pitt gave Connecticut some confidence at the end of the half let's see if it continues Young blocked by Stanley Robinson here's AJ Price the other way Greg Ostry for three and the tie ever ready Sticks it when you need it for UConn. Boy, that action against the grain. When Price drives for Ostry to come up the line, that is very difficult to guard. That dribble, handoff, slap back. Pittsburgh has led almost the entire game. This is only the second tie. The only UConn lead was a 2 0. Young got hammered. And that is the third foul on Thabit. Boy, what a challenge and the great shot fake. Just jabbing, jabbing, then that exaggerated shot fake, the most exaggerated in college basketball, and defenders go for it and go for it and go for it. It's so tough to stay on the deck, but this is incredible. Athleticism, 
Gee. Wow. You talk about challenging Hashim Thabit. He has been challenged in every way that a shot blocker can be challenged. Sam Young. Makes the first, and Thabit will come out of the ball game. Well, he started out. He thought Gavin Edwards was coming in for him, but Edwards is actually in for Stanley Robinson. And they did take the wrong one out at uh, George Blaney and Jim Calhoun. Edwards trying to straighten it out. The young, such an athlete. Remember that recruiting trip? We walked in and did flips in the gym. They were telling us about. Hey, he's a gymnast. It, it's, it's incredible. Cartwheels. He's done it. How can a guy who's averaged 18 points a game for two straight years still be underrated? But I think that Sam Young is underrated and underappreciated. Underrated poet as well, by yeah. all. Writes poetry. Sam Young has read some of his poetry at Open Mike Nights around Pittsburgh, and that's his third foul, and he didn't like the call. You've been at a few Open Mike contests yourself there, Sean. Not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to find an open mic with you two alongside. <laughs> We're just here for support. Young's going to continue to play with his three fouls. Austria trying to turn the corner. Dixon is a very good defender, and Adrian is fouled by Tyrell Biggs. A nice little sequence to get Adrian to the box and an excellent delivery into the low post area. Just a nice little cross screen. And you have really got as a defender to step in front of that cutter. Difficult to do in close quarters. Three fouls now in big, so two front court starters for Pittsburgh with three fouls here very early in the second half. Adrian makes the first free throw. Jeff is 66% for the year. He's a leading scorer for UConn, and as you see on the graphic, 22nd in the Big East. They are in first place with a very balanced scoring attack. Four players average in double figures. Of course, one of them, Dyson, their second leading scorer at 13.2 per game, out for the rest of the year. That is the first point for Adrian as he went one out of two from the line. That free throw line is such an important scoring area for UConn, but when they get there, they have got to knock free throws down. And here come the whistles, apparently. They're in less than a minute and a half. Lots of fouls. Gavin Edwards called for this one. Already two team fouls on each team. Sam Young, the free throw shooter. Jim Calhoun, two wins away from 800 total. The win Saturday at Seton Hall was his 550th at Connecticut, 23rd year here after 14 at Northeastern University in Boston. Great, yeah. amazing career and what he's built here at UConn. And he got a lane violation. At Northeastern, though, Jay, he did a heck of a job. Got that team into the NCAA, happened to have him one year. A profession, a professional in this profession. Yeah. Two NCAA titles. Only Jim Beheim has more wins in Big East Conference play. Call that foul on Blair. It's his first. Just over aggressive on a free throw block. -up. I really hope the officials let him play as much as they can. And we came here to watch two of the best teams in the country. And some of the Big East games this year have been overwhelmed by nonstop whistles. Well, I think they've done a great job here tonight. Though, Sean, yep. tonight. The tone is a little. I don't know. It makes you a little nervous here early in the second half. Ostry, the miss, and the rebound down to Blair. The Panthers want to run. And he runs right to the rim and begs for the ball. Well, he's in there for a, a week. Beat on the bench. Adrian held his ground, and Blair still powered up a bucket. It was like a sumo wrestling match. I think it's the same thing, chest to chest, belly to belly. 17 points for Dewan Blair. His career high is 32. That was a week ago Saturday at DePaul. They've got to throw the ball inside. Adrian had Blair on his hip. He could have picked up a foul though. They got that cross screen early. Here's a little rub for the open jumper. Price missed and Blair rebounded. 16 rebounds for DeJuan Blair. Wasn't that amazing, Sean? Every rebound he grabs with two hands. Mm -hmm. Rare he goes after it with just one. Steps here. Robinson traveled. In the game because of the foul difficulty to Tyrell Biggs. Blair posting up here, and that is 
body to body. A little contact there where Jeff Adrian brought that hand down. A lot of times that can be called a foul, but Blair stayed with it. He is undeterred and unfazed by contact. Well, the numbers we're seeing some of these great rebounders put up in recent days. The beat is 2020 game. Blake Griffin the other day. And now tonight, Dewan Blair. Kemba Walker banks one home to make it a two point game again. Now you look at the broadcast show talking about Dyson and this is a kid who's going to have to play valuable minutes and get experience quickly here he gets a little chest bump on fields. Well, Vance Fields is finding it very difficult to get around these UConn guards. I think I'm going to get some earmuffs for the refs. The coaches are working hard on both benches, chatting. Walker called for the foul, his second. Jerome Dyson, arthroscopic surgery today, out for the rest of the season. Already three fouls on each team here in the second half. If it evolves into a foul shooting contest, Connecticut gets the better free throw shooting team. Young, that's a three. Yeah, look who we had to come out and play him, Edwards. Just nice too, little bump. Yeah, just too easy on the catch. You can't allow a wide open shot like that. Walker. And the rebound down to Blair. Ian Wanamaker went after, but Dewan made sure he got a 17 4 to the night. Yeah, they can run their stuff now. Uh, not the deep thread in there. That should be. Oh, oh. I thought he got there. He was there. Yeah. Wow. What quick feet. Amazing feet. The key to defense are moving the legs. And uh, well, uh, he was no, up he in the air. There. I think he was up in the air. You're right. He yeah. was moving. Yeah. We get a second shot, so you can't argue with it. Pretty darn close, but a, a heck of a play by Kemba Walker. But I think that ultimately was the right call. Three fouls on Walker, so he goes out. Stanley Robinson back in. Sets beautifully. Look at this. Yeah, and Edwards says, I can do what Hashim the beat can do. It can be contagious. Nice shut off on good defense by Gilbert Brown, although Calhoun up off the bench, he wanted a foul called on Brown. And Calhoun also wanted him to go into the box area. Now he's in, oh. in a good position. Should have kicked it out. They are making him take some tough shots. You make some of these UConn bigs shoot over you instead of giving them an angle to the basket, you've got a chance. Fields called for palming the ball. Very demonstrative call by Ed Hightower. Timeout. 15-41 left. Second half, a five-point lead for Pitt. In Back at the XL Center, downtown Hartford, Connecticut. Big Monday presented by Bud Light. The Big East matchup is Pittsburgh number four and Connecticut number one and we go inside the play. We talked about Sam Young being a mismatch here being guarded by Gavin Edwards. Now watch Ed Edwards is going to go underneath this double screen. That is too long of a run for him instead of just locking and staying with Young. Young just shoots out to the wing gets a wide open three taking advantage of that mismatch and Gavin Edwards just not used to guarding a player like Sam Young. They do run some nice stuff but that was simple. Yeah, Young four, has 18, Blair has 17, and Tyrell Biggs, the other starting front court player, has five. So they have combined the starting front court for 40 of Pittsburgh's 44 points. Levance Fields has not scored tonight for the Panthers. Blair Adrian matchup. I would go to the big fella Adrian at some point just to do some damage to the white body. Team Fabit still on the bench for UConn with three fouls. Everybody's so well scattered. The single double handle. Young could have picked up the fourth there. Austri oh. missed the three. And Young up there to snatch it. Well, the player doesn't get it. Young makes sure. Big time gather. Field swatted out of bounds by Jeff Adrian. Well, you've got to explode to the rim in order to get a shot off when you've got a weak side shot blocker coming over. I thought he should have thrown it back on the pick and pop to Young. Young was wide open. You know who else was open was Blair on the box, too. I thought he could have slipped it to him. Same play, same result. Not quite. Adrian, the rebound. UConn now has six blocked shots tonight, only one of them by Thabit. 
Price inside. Adrian scores over to Juan Blair. He does not want to get another foul. Just keep riding the big fella. First field goal for Adrian. Their leading score averaging 14 a game has only three tonight. It's a three point game, 14 and a half to go. If you keep going at DeJuan Blair, you have a chance to wear him down. Fields went by Austri. Oh my goodness. Austri called for a foul. And that was sort of similar to what you were saying, Jay. Almost it wasn't a pick and pop guy, but uh, just right here, the ability to lock your guy when you get him, seal him. Whereas that was pretty simple for Adrian. He was, yeah, he's just too slow getting back off yeah. that pick and roll defense. Colin Austri was his first. DeJuan and DeJuan Blair now with 19 points. The defense by UConn off out of bounds under situations has not been as good as it usually is. It's a mystery almost. What a sell. A nice gamble by Blair. And then the juggling act. The bait's going to come back in. After Adrian lost the pass, Gibbs the miss. Blair the offensive rebound. Edwards helped to defend from behind. Rebound Adrian. He worked so hard. That was probably a shot he shouldn't have taken, should have kicked it back out. But when you work that hard to get the ball, it's hard to quarrel with. Nice pass. And Blair very slow recovered on his show. And the smart, intelligent move by Adrian. Right to the rim. Rick Blair was expecting somebody to switch off and help. They usually zone that back, and they didn't. Timeout pit. And you saw Hashim Thabit at the moment, the biggest cheerleader in the country at 7 3 2 63, getting ready to return for the Huskies. 13 and a half to go. It is a very big Monday in the Big East. I'm Reese Davis coming up on Big Monday. A.J. Abrams shooting 40% from three at 5 of 11 over the weekend against Colorado. The Horns in College Station. I wonder what tunes A.J. has going there. Hope it's a winning combination for Texas. It's coming up after the top of the hour. And that game, Reese, preceded by the fourth matchup this year between two teams in the top five in the country. That is the most top five matchup since ESPN began its poll in 1997-98. And so much at stake here tonight. First place on the line in the Big East. Connecticut, the only conference squad with one loss in league play. The three teams right behind them, Pitt, Marquette, and Louisville, with two defeats apiece in Big East. So you have the Big East race. There's one backdrop tonight. And the quest for a number one seed. Both of these teams in that conversation right now. As a matter of fact, our bracketologist, Bill Lenardi, believes if the tournament began today, they would both be number one seeds along with Oklahoma and North Carolina. Oh. Brad Wanamaker running the point. Levance Fields on the bench for a moment for Pittsburgh. Ashton Gibbs trying to hand it off to Biggs. The beat got in the way and then he gave it back to Biggs. Brown the miss. The beat foul this time by Biggs and that's his fourth. He just came back into the game with three fouls. They were then seconds as a fourth. Well you really got to squeeze the ball around Pitt. I mean he didn't bring it down as you frequently see big guys do but you've got to be tough with it. Pittsburgh was in way too much of a hurry on that offensive possession. Yeah, there's three bench players on the floor right now and Wanamaker Brown. And Gibbs. There's a little cross screen to get the beat to the box. Now use it. It's Price Austri to beat Adrian and Robinson. The starting five on the floor now for Connecticut. Adrian strong down the lane with Young right on him. He still managed to score. And backing up was Young. Great penetration. Two starters on the floor for Pitt. Young is the other. Young for three to quiet the crowd. Wow. You cannot leave the ball. 
He is tough to boot. There's some serious breakdowns by UConn defensively. What a game Sam Young is having. He is the one guy that nobody on this UConn team can really match up with successfully. Yeah, if it's Adrian, it's, uh, he doesn't have the foot speed. If it's Robinson, not the strength. 11th game this season with 20 points or more for Sam Young. He is 21. He and Blair have combined for 40 of Pitt's 49 points. And he's owned it up in the back with Blair. Oh. What you were talking about, Jay, they left the ball again for a moment, and Price had just enough room to bury a three. Blair, the step back air ball with the beat guarding. A chance for the lead for Connecticut, and a whistle, and it's the beat. Away from the ball, apparently got tangled up with Blair because as soon as Mike Kitts blew the whistle, both the beat and Blair looked at him, wondering which one was going to be called for a foul, and it is the fourth on Hashim Thabit. Timeout 11.20 to go. Pitt leading by one. I'm Reese Davis, Sports Center right now. Terry Porter out of work. Suns fire him. Phoenix is five games over 500, but out of the playoff picture by only a game at the moment. Steph Curry walking around normally. He injured his ankle against Furman on Saturday. Not clear whether he'll be able to play against the Citadel on Wednesday or in bracket busters against Butler Saturday. Sports Center after Texas A&M in Texas. Stay current with ESPN News. Nobody's made more threes in the Aggies than Josh Carter. He'll try to shoot A&M past Texas after the top of the hour. All right, Reese, I'm here in Hartford. The intensity even up a tick, if it's possible. Jim Calhoun had to be warned during the timeout to stop barking at Mike Kitts. He had good reason to as we look at the replay. Just running down the floor, the team to be trying to bump DeWan Blair at the free throw line, a, a pretty normal play for a big guy, and that call cannot be made. Not at all, not on this level. Very unfortunate. Now my concern for Calhoun is because he's been riding them pretty good and that he get a team. But that is just the reaction to a, a simple bump. Yeah, Big East, awful. it's nothing. Yeah, you just cannot make that call. A little 2-2-1, two, two, three-quarter court pressure right now to slow the advance by UConn. Way too many times this year, in my opinion, the Big East officials have overtaken the game. And there's already been more Connecticut fouls here in the second half than there was in the first half. And there doesn't seem to be much of a difference in the way the game has been played. There was a noticeable difference from the start of the half in the way it was officiated. What a blow by. Wanamaker was stripped. Back the other way. Austria missed it. Chance to give UConn their first lead since it was two to nothing. And he missed an easy layup. A pitch so good at counter punching. Oh, they get an offense at all. Huh? Now, people aren't sure what's going to be called. Well, that was a good call. I mean, he dropped that shoulder and lowered it. He should have gone up right away when he grabbed that offensive rebound. Just the second on Dewan Blair, and no argument. I guess he steamrolled Adrian and immediately ran the other end, accepting of the call. Uh, the defender is entitled to that space. You can't just lower your shoulder and dislodge the defender. He doesn't have to touch you much to move you either. 20 rebounds now for Dewan Blair. Price missed the three. Gilbert Brown can get off the floor. What an athlete. The beat after that very shaky fourth foul called against him on the bench. Uh, the fourth foul was not a good one, but that certainly didn't neutralize him. He was neutralized before that. Well, he has not had a good game, and it is because of the way Pittsburgh has attacked him. Yeah, Blair has been phenomenal with the big philosophy of getting it out early and scoring and then lifting in the half court set. Blair is 20 rebounds, two away from his career high earlier this year, 22 against Notre Dame. Robinson kicks the ball. We're midway through the second half. Two of the best teams in the country. With first place in the Big East at stake. 
Both teams eyeing a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Pittsburgh by one, still by one as Wanamaker got his own miss. Oh, going too deep. The numbers. Walker took it himself, and Connecticut leads for the first time since two nothing. Walker, Blair the chip. Brown is too strong. Blair got hit in the face. He needs to come out of the game. He's heading right to their bench. Walker, no. Edwards stripped. Walker will pull it out. And Pittsburgh wants a timeout. Blair got hit in the face. He went to the bench. They were playing four defenders against five. Good officiating, though. They they made sure there wasn't an attack at the rim. Make sure the play was right. They waited until the whole sequence finished, Sean. Oh, goodness. Over the left eye. That's why, that's why guards never go underneath the rim. That's just a natural reaction in basketball. Not much sympathy. points, 21 rebounds for DeWan Blair. Not much sympathy in the building for him, was there? He's still on the bench, towel over his face. Adrian into the lane, bodies fly. Robinson rattles one home. It's the largest lead of the night for Connecticut with nine minutes to go. Pittsburgh, as you say, has just one timeout left. Jamie Dixon reluctant to use it here. This is where you need Fields to step up. Get them organized and take some time in their offensive set. It should end up with Young at some point. Well, Fields hasn't been able to get past Kemba Walker. He has stayed right in front of him, and Fields has not been able to get around him. Fields leaving his first points of the night. They crash the offensive glass with Brown and Young. The officials, a moment's hesitation before deeming it. Pittsburgh ball and, and your point about him not blowing by feels that is Jay he settled on that shot for that simple reason that was just a bad shot he's frustrated he's over six from the floor Sam Young the bucket if Pittsburgh could just play out of bounds underneath plays all night long they'd have 100 points and they score every time you can't really do a good job by their standards 23 for Young. It's a deep two for Robinson, and he banks it off. A kiss in downtown Hartford. They need him to step up if they're going to do what they expect to do this year. Back screen pop. Young for the tie. Long. Fields the offensive rebound. Dixon trying to tie it up. He's had a very quiet night. Battle for the ball. Adrian had it. Dixon got it back. And now it belongs to Press. What a fight. Sounds like you're doing hockey. Incredible. Everything so valuable. Young went for the steal and didn't get it. Adrian from the elbow. Can Jamie Dixon wait for the media timeout that'll come on the next whistle? He will. Whistle away from the ball. Two officials have it. Tony Green and Mike Kitts making sure they saw the same thing. They nod at each other. And it's a Connecticut foul. It's on A.J. Price, his second. Connecticut's over the limit. For a while, it was the Stars carrying this show. Now some of the role players stepping into the spotlight. It's a typical big Monday in the Big East from downtown Hartford. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Bud Light with just the right taste that never fills you up. The difference is drinkability. And in part by Pacific Life. For insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life.
stars on display tonight. The Pittsburgh stars Young and Blair keeping them in the ball game. They have combined for 42 of Pittsburgh's 51 points tonight. On the night when LeVance Fields has not scored. Momentum on the side of Connecticut. They have their largest lead, a five-point edge. Tomorrow night on ESPN, it's Super Tuesday. The doubleheader starts at 7 with the Big Ten matchup, Michigan State and Purdue. And then at 9, Kentucky with the incredibly hot Jody Meeks against the Vanderbilt Commodores. Super Tuesday presented by KFC on ESPN. And Sean, in tough games and situations like this, you love your seniors to step up. Jeff Avery with that elbow jumper three years ago. None of us would believe he could make that. Now he's become a confident shooter, particularly at crunch time. One and one for Jermaine Dixon as Connecticut's over the limit. Pittsburgh's been called for five fouls in this half. And Dixon made the first. He's had a quiet night, averages nine per game. Over the last 11 games, he's averaged more than 11 per contest. Makes both. Jamie Dixon squad down by three. DeJuan Blair back in the game, left for a moment after getting hit in the face with an elbow. Here's Kemba Walker, the freshman out of the Bronx, Rice High School. There's that little diagonal they like to run to get Adrian to the box and a down screen. Didn't work for Austrian. The beat still on the bench with four fouls. It's Walker, Austrian. Robinson Edwards and Adrian. Austrian wasn't really squared up. Blair, the rebound in traffic. His 22nd, tying his career high. He's an absolute beast. He blocks you off. Field still has not scored. We mentioned at the beginning of the telecast. His shooting numbers are dramatically different. Home versus away. He's a much better shooter at home. Well, that, that wasn't a good shot. It wasn't even off one pass. He's getting away from running the team. That's what he's got to do. Got five assists tonight. Below his average. Still a long way to go. Over six minutes. When will Jim Calhoun come back with the beat? I need to I as long as he's ahead. I would wait. As as you're in control. I'm not going to have any rhythm anyway. Austin down the lane with a shot clock running out. And it's a violation. Jim Calhoun is saying Austria's shot hit the rim. And now the officials will huddle. Uh, left of the rim, it looked like, didn't it? Yeah, I don't think live. I did not think live it hit the rim. I think it's just wide left the whole way. Yeah, it didn't hit the rim. The officials have now gone over to the monitor. You know, you notice Edwards got that ball in the foul line in practice yesterday. He took that jumper and was making them. Yes, He's, that did not hit the rim. Yeah. That's a great look from our director, Chip Dean, our producer, Bo Garrett, and our outstanding ESPN crew of production personnel and technicians. Shot clock violation. It is a shot clock violation, and even though the call went his way, Jamie Dixon's upset. These guys both like to take their shots when the opportunity presents itself. And tonight, the opportunities apparently have been there for both coaches <laughs> to take their shots from the opening tip. Just blowing off a little steam. They're just fighting for a league presence. Sometimes you wonder if you can score inside against Connecticut. Pitt has tonight. They haven't gotten anything from the perimeter, but why change when it's working so well near the bucket? Dewan Blair, another two, and a chance to tie it. And Jay, there's no way this should happen. That length of a pass, they're not harassing the passer. Also, not in the proper position with the footwork. And this kid's just so smart, too. Plus, he discards you in a legal fashion and steps to the ball. Jeff Adrian just didn't move as the ball moved to adjust his position. You can't allow your man on the weak side just to duck into the lane like that. Blair ties the game. Second foul on Adrian. Here comes the beat. Back in with 5.44 to go. About five minutes on the bench. And the first thing you do is go straight at him. As soon as Pittsburgh gets the ball, it's got to go to Blair and go straight at Hashim Tabeet. He has four fouls. Walker stop and go move. They need him to step in for Dyson. He's doing it nicely. Yeah, this kid's got some talent. 
just about learning the ropes in this league. 21 points against St. John's back in the garden. It was like home for him. And this game developing into exactly what you would expect from these two teams. Blair traveled. One little hop too many as he tried to shed the beat. And Jamie's got to be careful. Holding your ground pretty good, huh? Got to bring a little more with the big fella, Lumen. Dixon wanted the fifth foul on the beat. Five minutes to go. Connecticut with the ball in a two point lead. They have Walker, the freshman, running the show with A.J. Price playing off the ball. And thus far, Fields hasn't been able to stay in front of Walker. He's been able to get around him and essentially play five on four. And go underneath. Robinson for his first three of the year. Rescued by Fields. Two to tie, three for the lead. Dixon wants the lead. Dixon has the lead for Pittsburgh. Nice ball movement back and forth. Two on one. Sensational. Timeout. Connecticut. Quiet night for Jermaine Dixon, but that was a loud noise at the most opportune time for the Pitt Panthers. Now this team knows how to take advantage. Well, they got numbers, they got decisions either side. Now you put Robinson on a string, yo-yo him. A little nylon from deep by the southpaw. And just a slow reaction by Kemba Walker when the pass was made to the corner and Robinson had to cover it. That's a rotation that Walker has got to make. Thursday night is a double dip of college basketball action. Thursday night showcase presented by T. Rowe Price on ESPN 7 Eastern Time. Number nine Duke scuffling a bit lately taking on the St. John's Red Storm. The number nine was at nine Eastern Wisconsin trying to enhance its NCAA tournament resume against Indiana in the Big Ten matchup. Pittsburgh looking for its first win ever. Against the top ranked team in the country. The last three times they played number one, it's always been Connecticut. They have an eight to two run. Answering a seven to five, 17 to five Yukon run. Now Robinson's got to get better shots. He's got to play for two point shots. As you mentioned, I believe only for 14 now with that last miss from deep. Get a middle game. And Jamie Dixon seems amused that the officials are allowing this conversation to go on as long as it is. Now he's less than amused. Dixon's got to be careful. Give him a little space. Can't score from there. Dixon all over Price. And on him for too long. Now you've got to have great speed to keep up with these kids. The extraordinary ability to blow by you. Even though Dixon got fouled, that was a great effort. First foul on Dixon, sixth team foul, so the next one puts the Panthers over the limit. And they did a good job of not fouling after they had three very quick fouls beginning of the half. Nice cross screen. Pretty play. And Adrian got the roll. Connecticut by one as we tick down to four minutes remaining here in Hartford. Eleven points for Adrian, all in the second half. You get the lock low. Young down the lane. Young is fouled. Well, they isolate you beautifully, don't they? Little post rub to get Young to the corner, and then the lock low by Blair, the blow by by Young. Colin Robinson is his first. Well, from the beginning, it's been a typical physical, physical night in the Big East. The Aggies are getting fired up for their longtime rivals. A.J. Abrams, coming off a 29-point game, leads the Longhorns up against his nemesis, lockdown defender Derek Rowland of the Aggies. Rivalry Week wraps up from Cotton Station. Next. And Ron Franklin and company with a tough act to follow tonight. With the way this game has played out, if you look at our Cisco game track, it's Connecticut with a one-point lead. They trailed by as many as eight in the first half. I guess it's easy to get a 2020 
in this league. The beat had one Saturday, and DeWan Blair, 22 points, a career high 22 rebounds. DeWan Blair is just an absolute man. Nobody's been able to stop him. And they run so many nice things to get him in position to dominate. And right now, I think the concern for him and the beat is foul problems. And the best way to eliminate that is to be in the right position defensively. All right now for Blair, he doesn't have to worry about fouls. He's only got two. The, the issue with fouls, you don't want to put UConn at the free throw line. But Thabit is the guy that's got to worry a little bit because he's got four. And I think Pittsburgh can continue to go inside to Dewan Blair and give him opportunities to score or get fouled. Young for the lead, makes both. Hit by one, nearing three and a half minutes remaining. Fifth lead change of the game. There have been four times. They get it to him. Inside for the big. Trying to dunk it. He was fouled. He's a little upset with himself. Nice little call out of the timeout. He does a nice job of turning and presenting under the rim. The timing of the pass was excellent. That's just a set that most teams call horns. They set little screens by the elbows and roll to the basket. And Sam Young had to come down from the opposite big to pick up that roll. And he just got caught behind. When you let Hashim Thabit catch it with two feet in the paint, you're in trouble. And that's the fourth foul now on Sam Young. So he has four. Tyrell Biggs has four. The beat has four for Connecticut. Machine missed the first and made the second. He's a 63% free throw shooter. We're tied at 61, 326 to go. Robinson back in. UConn has to continue to go inside. You know that's where Pittsburgh wants to go, and UConn has to match that. Give it to him. Fields, will this finally be the one? Yes, LeVance Fields, his first Man, points of the night. This kid is tough. He's not having one of his better games, but he can stick it. Quickly down the stretch. Now one for eight from the field. Rice looking for the tie. Tough shot and air ball and last touch by Robinson. Dixon did a tremendous job defensively. He really fights. But to put pressure on the ball and pressure on a shot. How about on the catch? He was right there. And right here, we mentioned Fields not able to blow by, but he get caught behind. He just knows how to put that dagger in at the appropriate time. Kemba Walker showing his youth making some defensive mistakes. Young to Fields. Two and a half minutes to go. The ball with Pittsburgh and a three-point lead for the Panthers. Fields feeling it. Runs home another. Wow, some early engines. Woo. How about Dewan Blair clearing out everybody down that lane? The hard roll opened it up. And Fields took advantage of it. Here's the screen. Now watch the roll. Hard roll and both the beat and Austri caught up guarding Blair and that left field wide open. Very well run by Pittsburgh. So he plays with a lot of confidence in the air. Checks the bench out. I'm your guy. Levance Field started the night. Go for his first seven. He's made his last two. Both of them three balls to give Pittsburgh a six point lead with 220 to go. The senior from Brooklyn's played in a lot of big games for Pittsburgh. This one's another and as usual he is rising to the occasion and rising to the occasion now I would do the same play to get the big fella at the rim. Use the two high ball screens and get number 34 to beat to the basket. That's what they're doing again the switch. Price stripped by Dixon. Long way to go yet, but if it comes down to it, Connecticut is not a team that leans heavily on the three-point shot. Only St. John's has made fewer threes in the Big East this year than Connecticut. There's better defense by Pitt on that play. Ooh. Adrian almost used the free arm for an offensive foul to beat. Did not get the bounce. Gilbert Brown the rebound. Two minutes to go. Pittsburgh with a six-point lead looking at their first ever win against the number one team in the country if they can finish the job. Well, isn't it amazing when you don't let Hashim Thabit dunk, he is limited offensively, and Pittsburgh has done a great job of taking that away from him. Look at this, alert play by Kemba Walker, and Fields let him go. Didn't want to foul. 
Timeout, Jim Calhoun. Talked about Walker gaining experience. You don't have to teach him how to guard. He gets the puppy set, and he's got the quick hands to deliver. Much better on the ball than he is off the ball for obvious reasons. He's young and just reaches in with that right arm and not protecting the ball with his body was LeVance Fields. A pretty smart move just to let him go and not foul. <laughs> exactly. UConn bench now at 18 points to just two for Pittsburgh. And you mentioned Jay and Bill, if the beat doesn't get a dunk, his offensive game is limited. He's only taken four shots tonight, one out of four. Well, they've done a good job of pushing him out of the lane and not allowing him to get two feet in the paint. And they are not allowing anything when there's penetration. A lot of times what uh, UConn likes to do is just lob that ball up to him, and they're keeping a body on him and keeping him away. And they've attacked him. They've also attacked him on the offensive end, which has taken his legs away a little it's bit. It's eerily similar to the uh, scouting report I heard about you. <laughs> yeah. so back up. But right now, one thing that UConn does, they press, they 2-2-1 two, two, here, they get on the ball and see if they trap, diamond tra press. In a spot where they really would seem to miss Jerome Dyson in need of a dependable scorer right now and a very good defender. Fields out there with Dixon, Young, Brown, and Blair. We mentioned earlier Pittsburgh is one of the worst free throw shooting teams in the Big East. Pitt trying to lift this team and bring the big guys out. I would not let Fields get the ball back. Fields is a decent free throw shooter, better than their average. He's at 73%. Has to shoot a deep three with a shot clock running out. The long rebound down to Brown. One minute to go, a full shot clock for Pittsburgh. And he's lost it. Nice play by Walker again. Terrific. Where was he going? There was nowhere to go. Now this kid can rush into some things, but you're right. And, uh, the floor general. This way she was brought to be able right back out to the top of the key and get organized. Because he was turning to come back out, but he was turning into the defensive pressure. And Walker's very good, though, ragging it. Second foul on Fields, one and one now. Stanley Robinson, 60% for the year. Junior from Birmingham has it pop out, rebounded by Sam Young. And Fields is fouled. The Panthers, we mentioned as a team, struggle from the free throw line, 65% for the year. That's 12 in the Big East. That feels adequate, though, over 70, Sean, plus a gutsy kind of a kid. Four fouls now on Kemba Walker, first free throw of the night for Levance Fields. Only shooting 57% from the line in Big East play, though. Now this is where you show your toughness. I was just to say, the numbers don't mean anything with this kid. He's very streaky as a free throw shooter. He's now made 15 of his last 16. And on the road, late in the game, trying to protect the lead. And this is a major league form of toughness. Fields is in the witness protection program a while tonight, but he has scored the last eight Pittsburgh points. And you're going to score quickly, so you need your quick hitters. They get one. Oh, can't allow it over three. Even for three. Oh, the beat. Swatted. Blair. The hit hater. for Dixon. Dewan Blair has been the man of the match. And now desperation time. Price jacked a three. The beat goes crashing into the area behind the basket as he tried to save it and could not. 30 seconds to go and Connecticut in a heap of trouble. I'll give you an old name, Gus Johnson. How about the physical rebounding ability of this guy? He is a stud. And he blocked that with the crook of his elbow. And uh, the beat has just fouled out. Well, the beat had started to gain a lot of momentum when you talk about Big East Player of the Year and perhaps even National Player of the Year. The problem with Pittsburgh is that they have three guys, Fields, Young, and Blair. It's hard to argue who's the best player, the most valuable player on their team, but DeJuan Blair just inserted himself back into the Big East Player of the Year conversation. Extraordinary. Not Both he the, and Sam Young, wouldn't you say? I, I would agree. You mentioned Young at the beginning of the show, how important he would be this evening. But the combination with the trio, Blair, feels late, and Blair just, his presence continually during the course of this game. And 
you know, not to argue the point, but Big East Player of the Year, maybe. National Player of the Year, no way. No. I mean, Blake Griffin of Oklahoma is far and away the best player in the country. Well, you're, you've been his agent all year yeah. long. Yeah. So you represent him? Because you're so Just because I have foresight? <laughs> would, 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 you, would, you, would you two agree with this? That maybe Blair, when he threw to beat over his shoulder in a legal way, set the tone that you're here to play. Do you agree with that or yeah. not? Yeah, tearing somebody's arm off. <laughs> yeah. It sent a, I, I just sent a pretty good agree. message, didn't I it? I said, this isn't going to be easy, UConn. If you think you're going to win it, it's going to be a fight. Well, he had a chance perhaps to put the game away at the free throw line and didn't. And then Adrian, the quick dunk. Connecticut, no timeouts left. And the lead is six. North Carolina was number one at the start of the year. Looked like clearly the best team. They lasted seven weeks in that perch. But it's been topsy turvy at the top ever since. Boston College has upset the number one team in the country. Pittsburgh looking for its first win ever against the number one ranked team. They were number one for two weeks. Connecticut starting its third week atop the polls. And if this one stays in the wind calm for Pitt, it'll likely knock Connecticut out of the top spot in the poll. Well, it's going to be a rotating position, I think, for teams throughout the year because this isn't the last time I think either team will lose. But what an effort on the road by Pittsburgh and especially Dewan Blair. So this goes well for the NCAA. A little giveaway, stop the clock. You know, what's interesting about this Pittsburgh team, I don't think Pittsburgh is as good defensively as they have been over the last several years. They are much better on the offensive end. The most efficient team in the country offensively, primarily because they don't turn the ball over and they get a lot of second shots. 40% of their misses, they rebound to get second shots. That's amazing. But they also can manage the clock. I mean, they get the breakouts a little bit more this year than in the past, but they understand how to set you up, how to punish you, and they got a pretty good out in the box in Blair. But not a great shooting team. They have been making shots throughout Big East play, but I wouldn't call them a group of drop dead great shooters. I'll tell you what, that strength they have with Sam Young is a matchup difficulty, and Dewan Blair dominating inside. It's truly impressive. Oh my God! It's the second 2020 game of the year. He had 23 points, 22 rebounds against Notre Dame. On January 31st, he has 22 points and 23 rebounds tonight. He's our Sonic most valuable player of the game. You know, he only had 10 rebounds in the second half. What do you think those bands would be on my arm that he has? You think they'd drop right off? You could use them as a belt. <laughs> I think I could fit around your mouth. <laughs> oh, That's the stretch. It took you this long to get personal. Yeah, I don't think we can underestimate how important this win was for Pittsburgh. I mean, Sam Young with 25 points. They had no answer for him. But to come on the road and take on number one and the most dominant shot blocker in college basketball today along with Jarvis Bernardo of Mississippi State and to neutralize him the way that uh, Pittsburgh did is an amazing statement made by the Panthers. Walker at the free throw line with 18 seconds to go. The 23 rebounds by the way is not the single game pit record that's 26 rebounds but it is the most ever by a pit player in a Big East game. Bill's old pal guy who made Bill famous Jerome Lane had 21 Ooh. points uh, 21 rebounds rather against Connecticut back in 1987. Send it home Jerome. Now this pit team as you mentioned they don't jump out at you they just beat you. I think they're a final four caliber team. I think oh. they're going to have the kind of the run that Kansas had. Good team for a number of years, but the disappointment in the NCAA tournament, I really think this is going to be the year Pittsburgh gets over that next turtle because that's the next thing on the list for them now. Getting past the Sweet 16, they haven't done it under Jamie Dixon. I think mentally, you know, just to get in there, get your legs under you. Well, they certainly have, whoops, uh, Adrian sort of showing his disdain for the result. So the Big East race will be as wide open as it could possibly be as we head down the stretch. Four teams now with two losses, including Pittsburgh. They will 
post to Paul, go to Providence, a very good veteran Friar team. They're at Seton Hall, a team that just won five in a row in the league, and then Marquette and Connecticut to close out the regular season. That game against UConn in Pittsburgh could be exceedingly meaningful. The gauntlet of the Big East schedule. You know, you wonder, is it going to toughen you up or is it going to wear you out? in the dunk and it's going to be a meaningless explanation point for Connecticut foul committed by Adrian and here's a look at the updated Big East standings Pittsburgh with the win goes to 11 and 2 in conference Connecticut has played more games than anybody in the league now with 14 they're 12 and 2 Marquette and Louisville very much alive in the race for the Big East regular season title. And Sean, you mentioned this earlier. What a job Dixon has done. I mean, consistency out of the gate. You know, 15, 16 wins in a row. Get into the Big East and be a just a viable contender every year. Well, this is eight straight years for Pittsburgh now with 20 or more overall wins and 10 or more league wins. The next longest streak along those lines in the Big East is Marquette with four 2010 seasons in a row. And in Jamie's six years had 20 plus wins in those years as well. Just keeps grinding them out. Now A.J. Price has been grimacing and holding his left leg. Hope it's nothing but. I think we saw tonight Connecticut certainly does miss Jerome Dyson. Air ball from Austria at the buzzer. Pittsburgh has its first victory ever against a top ranked team in the country. Now 1 and 14 all time against number one. And the Panthers tied in the loss column with three others for first place in the Big East. And fortifying their resume with an eye toward a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Dewan Blair believes psychologically that would be very important for the Panthers as they head into the field of 65. Dewan Blair had a mammoth night, Bill. Uh, Sean, you mentioned the numbers. This sort of set the tone for the evening. Uh, the throw over, then the little jump hook, the post up, and this is the belly bump uh, to excel in the low box area to let him know I got a little more in the arsenal, a little left hook. Uses both hands, just a little ability to fade away from the action, but the power game extraordinary. The quick release and kiss by the big fella. And Jay Billis is standing by with Dewan Blair with 22 and 23 tonight. Dewan, you took a shot to the eye. That eye looks like it's closing up on you. But talk about your mindset coming into this game. It looked like you wanted to go through Hashim Thabit rather than over him. Yeah, um, you know, because if, uh, if I try to go over him, he, he'll, he'll throw my stuff to over here where y'all is. So uh, I just uh, try to uh, lay my shoulder in, and I got the best of him tonight. You know, early on, Sam Young was the dominant player offensively for you. When he went out with fouls, that's when you seemed to take over. Yeah, um, that's the, that's how I get. That's how um, our, our, our our team is. You know, if one goes down, then somebody else step up. I know. I bet you, if I would have went out, then he would have stepped up. So, you know, we did a good job. We um, Levans did a great job um, playing him, and I told him to keep shooting his threes, and they failed at the end, and uh, we did a good job. Well, a great win against number one. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you man. Sean, back to you. Blair supported by Sam Young's 25. LeVance Field had only 10, but they were all down the stretch. Hashim Thabit, only five points, two block shots tonight. Pittsburgh wins in Hartford, 76-68. The final, this has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Now for Jay Billis and Bill Raftery, Sean McDonough saying, good night. Let's send you out to College Station for Texas and Texas A&M.